Hi everyone and welcome to my sewing room. Today I have a project for you. We're going to make a mug rug and we're going to do it in PE Design 11 software. So if you would like to know how to do that, make sure that you don't go away and you watch this video. My name is Rosemary and this is Enchanting Rosemary Sewing and Embroidery. As I said before, um, we're going to do a project today. We're going to make a mug rug. I've been trying in the last couple of videos to address some questions that some of my viewers have had about um, embroidery and their sewing machines and the software. And one of my viewers actually approached me in the store and said that she wanted to know how to make a rug, rug, mug rug from her embroidery designs that she have has in her stash of embroidery designs. Um, and she felt like the video I did in Design Center was a little bit confusing and maybe a little too fast. I hope this is slower. We're doing this in PE Design instead of in Design Center. So if you have PE Design software, I think it'll be a little bit easier for you to understand how to do it. And I hope you will learn something new today. So um, with that, let's just go to my computer and let's get started on this project. Okay. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to open up our PE Design 11 software. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to close this wizard. So I want to make sure that I'm not going to make this um, mug rug too big. And the best way to do that is come up here to the corner and hit your flower and go to design settings and change this to a five by seven hoop so that you know what, approximately what size you're making it. And all you have to do is hit the drop down arrow and find the five by seven hoop and say, okay. Now I usually don't like to have a grid on here, but if you wanna have a grid on it to make sure your squares are coming out right, hit view and click show grid and a grid will come up and that way you can follow the boxes to make sure that you're making it the right size. Um, so anyway, what we you have to think this through. What is it exactly that I'm trying to do? I want to make, um, first I want to do a box that's going to show me where to lay my batting. So let's do that first. So we're going to go home and we're going to go to shapes and I want a rectangle. And then I'm going to left click with my mouse and drag. And see, I'm dragging kind of like at an angle. And when I let go, it will have drawn a rectangle just like that. So th this is, of course, not what I'm looking for. Um, I want it to be just an outline stitch that's going to show me where to lay my batting. So I'm going to come up here. PE Design Software automatically, once you draw a shape, puts you in your Shape Shapes menu. So I've got the option of a zigzag stitch and a fill stitch. I'm going to tell it to do this as a running stitch on the outside. And on the inside, I'm going to say, do not sew. So now I just have a square rectangle. That's going to show me where to lay my batting. So I'm going to lay the batting down and then I want to stitch it in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go home, choose my shapes menu again, and my rectangle. This time I'm going to come up just a little bit further up this way. I'm going to left click, hold my left mouse key down, and drag across at an angle again until I've drawn a box that's just barely bigger than that one. And it's the same color, it's blue. I can come up here to the corner and I can, once the mouse changes to a double line, a double arrow, I'm going to pull it down so that it's just a little bit bigger than the first one. I also want to change the color so that the machine knows to stop in between these two. So I'm going to come up here to this spool and click on it and let's just make it red. It doesn't really matter what color you make it, just as long as it's a different color. So now I've got sew down the batting. Then I want to lay my fabric down on top of that, whatever color I'm going to use my background to be. 
and then I want to stitch that in place. So what I'm going to do this time instead of drawing another rectangle is I'm going to come over to this one right here. And if you right click on it, it says select objects. So that red one is selected. And I'm going to come up here to home and I'm going to say copy. So now it just copied it and then paste. And I know I've got two of them because I got a plus sign right here. I want to hit the plus sign. There's two of them there. So I'm going to click over here. I'm going to just left click so that nothing is selected. Come on. There, nothing is selected. Now I'm going to select the second one, the red one, and I'm going to change it to, we're going to just change it to green. So now I have um, a blue one for the batting, a red one, no, a blue one for placement stitch, a red one for the batting, and a green one to sew my fabric down on top of that. So then I should by this point have the batting down, the fabric down, so I'm going to place. Now I want to add a design. And I did a lot of thinking about this. What do I want to do? Easter's coming. I could do an Easter bunny. I could do some eggs. I could do a couple other things. And what I just decided on is I'm just going to do a little sewing um, mug rug. So I have in my designs, I'm going to go home. And I can click on import patterns here, um, or I can just come over here. This is already open, and I have a, a little picture of a file with an arrow that's telling me to import patterns from there. I can click on that, and then here's all my designs that I have in my computer. And in here I have some sewing designs. Now I hit sewing notions and say okay, and this should change to my sewing notions file. Now, if you want to know where I got these from, these are actual um Anita Good designs. I bought them a long time ago, but I'm sure if you go to some different websites, I know that Urban Threads has some cute um sewing notions, and um there's they're all over the place that so you can find something. But basically the point is you just want to find a design that you want to sew out on your mug rug. So this one right here is a um, pin cushion. I'm going to drag it over there and you can see it's actually too big for what I'm doing. So in order to make it bigger and make it smaller, I'm going to hold my mouse right over this black square in the, in the right corner. And then I'm going to hold the control button. And at the same time you hold the control button, Why is it doing that? Oh, I'm holding the wrong button. Control button. I get a little box. And unfortunately, my recording software doesn't always show what happens when you do that. So if it's not showing that, just remember if you hold the control button down, a little box appears. And then you can drag it down and make it smaller. And it'll adjust the stitches for you. So. That fits in there pretty good. I like it. Now, I want to do something else. So I think I'm going to come over here and pick up these scissors. And I'm going to put them over here too. And I'm going to use the round dot to move it around. And I'm going to hold my mouse, my left mouse key down and the control button. And I'm going to pull this down. Oops. That did not work. Oh my. Let's hit undo. Undo is your friend, right? Undo. Let's just keep, I'm going to keep pushing undo until my scissors are back the way they were originally. And then I'll size it. Good. Now they size down without getting messed up. Now I can hold the red dot and turn it and put them where I want them to be. Uh, let's do this. Okay. I think that's going to work. I think that'll be cute. Okay. This uh, pin cushion is an applique. So I'm definitely going to have to have a step where I have to put applique over the top, but that's okay. It'll come out good. Um, so now I want to do like a quilting thing around the outside of this. And this is one of the nice things about PE design 
11 is you have those same fills that are in the Stellaire and the Luminaire, and maybe even a few extras. So we want to fill the background, but before we can fill the background, we have to select, I have to select the scissors. I'm going to hold the control button down and select the pin cushion. And then I'm going to hold the control button down and select my outside green square because I want all of those selected um, so I can tell it to fill everywhere but there. Then up in the home menu, you have what's called background fill. So we're going to click on background fill. For some reason, my scissors aren't in there. So I'm going to cancel this. I don't know what I did wrong. Let's try it again. I'm going to select this, hold my control button down, select there, hold my control button down, select there, and then I'm going to hit background fill. Good. So the scissors, the pincushion, and that green box are all in there. Then I'm going to decide what do I want to do? Do I want to put some stippling in there? Do I want to do a decorative fill? Or do I want to do a crosshatch? I think I want to do a crosshatch fill. So once I've chosen that, I'm going to click in the green box right here. If I didn't have the green box there, it would have filled all the way to the edge of the hoop, which is not what I wanted. It did not fill in between the two scissor holes, so I'm going to click in each one of those. I just left click in the middle of them. I don't want to left click in this one because I don't want it to crosshatch over the top of my pin cushion. So that looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit next. And then I can change the size of the crosshatch to whatever I want it to be. It can be half an inch. It can be three quarters of an inch. I can update my preview, see how big it is, if it's what I want. Um, I don't want it to be too small, but I also don't want it to be too big. I can actually turn the direction of the crosshatching. I don't know if that's going to look any, yeah, that looks pretty much the same. Um, but you can do that. Um, and you can exclude internal patterns. I'm not sure if I took that off, what would happen? Oh yeah, it went ahead and did right in the middle of that. I don't want to do that. Update preview. Okay, so now I'm going to say okay. And um, I put the cross hatching over the top of my fabric. So I have one more step I have to do to make this into a mug rug. And that is there's a step where I'm going to lay a piece of fabric across the top of this. And I'll show you that when I'm sewing it out. But usually what I do is I take two pieces of fabric and overlap them over the top so I can turn it inside out. So in order to do that, I need another rectangle. So I can't really, it's really hard for me to come in here and choose a rectangle from what's out here. I could draw another one. That would be okay. But I can also say, when you look over here in your sewing order, you will see that here's your cross hatching and here's all your stitching. So that the software immediately moved the cross hatching to before my applique and my scissors, which I really like that. That's what exactly what I want it to do. But it moved the green square after that one. And I want to move the green square to do before that one. And then I'm going to right click and select objects. So I got the black boxes around that green square. I know it's selected. I'm going to come up here, go home, copy, and then I'm going to hit paste. And if I scroll down to the very bottom, there is a new green square that's been added at the end. And just so that I know this is a different step, I don't have to change it, but I'm going to change the color to even another color. So. It's going to sew down my, it's going to show me where to lay my batting. It's going to sew my batting down. I'm going to cut the excess batting off. And then I'm going to lay my fabric down. It's going to sew my fabric down. Then it's going to sew uh, the cross hatching. And then it's going to start my embroidery design, whatever embroidery design I have laid on there. And then it's going to sew my top fabric so that I can turn it inside out, make it into a mug rug. Hopefully I did that slow enough that you understood exactly the steps on how to do that. Um, but you can always rewind it, and watch it again. So let's go to the sewing machine and I'm going to try and show you this step by step on the sewing machine. Okay. So I have my embroidery machine and I have my five by seven hoop 
and I have hooped it with no-show mesh because that is one of the ones that you can sew into it and um, and at the same time stabilize it and not have to put your fabric in the hoop. So that's the one that I decided to use and I actually have two layers of it in there. And then I had to decide on a fabric and I went through my bin. I have all sorts of different kinds of sewing fabrics and this one here has little pins all over it. I don't know if you can see that, but I thought that would be really cute for the top. And then for the backing, I have this one. I think I got this at Joann's, but it's got little scissors. Um, let me see if I can put it. It's got little scissors and um, flowers and um, a few little sewing notions like thimbles, but mostly it's scissors. I just thought that was really cute. So I'm gonna put that on the back. And then I had to go through my velvets and velveteens and I just picked a, a red velvet to do that um, pin cushion with. So I think we're all ready to go. I'm gonna go into, let me see if I can do this. Um, I'm gonna go into my sewing machine, cooperate sewing machine. Um, and I'm going to pick embroidery. And then I have my designs in here. So I'm gonna hit my stick. Let's see. Um, I made a pocket that was called sewing. And I've got some designs I got from embroidery. Oh, this, these are from Urban Threads. They're really pretty. But here's our um, room mug rug that we made. So let's go ahead and set that down. And then we're gonna push embroidery. And we're ready to go. So let me move the camera so it's a little bit closer so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, so step one is sewing down the placement stitch. And I've decided to do this with blue thread because mostly my fabric is blue. So I'm gonna sew down the placement stitch. Okay, step two is laying your batting down. So we're gonna lay this scrap batting. And this is just stuff that I save over after I finish a quilt. I'm gonna just lay it over the top of the hoop like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and sew that down. Okay, so this obviously is not in the directions, but you need to take some small scissors and you need to trim off every part of the batting that um, is not in the centerpiece. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do that. So I'm not gonna be real particular about cutting that off. I have some rough edges here. I don't care, it's gonna be covered up, but I cut it off and now I'm sliding it back on my machine. And now I'm going to take the fabric that I have from my main piece, which is the one that's got the pins on it. And I'm gonna just lay it. I'm gonna make sure it's nice and big that it covers the whole hoop and smooth it down. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start with that next outline stitch that we put in there. So I'm gonna let this sew this part down. Okay, the next step is gonna start doing the hash, the, the cross hatching background and the embroidery. And I'm gonna move the camera just a little bit so you can kind of see. See the way it's gonna do the cross 
uh, hatching next. And then if I hit the plus sign, the next step is the applique of my uh, pin cushion and then all the other pieces of this design, which is going to take a long time. And I'm not going to uh, let you see me sew this out, but you know the basics of how to sew out your embroidery design. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll come back so I can show you the last step. Okay, we're getting ready to do the last step. I've embroidered out my um, pin cushion and I always say that in the same way that uh, it's a woman's prerogative to change her mind, so it is with a sewist or an artist to change their mind. I found this red velvet with little sparkles on it and I really liked it, so that's what I ended up using on this. So all the embroidery is completely finished. So the last step, I took this fabric that I showed you before and I cut it into a rectangle that was as big as my mug rug and then I folded it in half and pressed it and I'm gonna lay it literally halfway so that it goes over the seam allowance so I've got extra and then I have another piece just like it and I'm gonna lay that and I'm gonna overlap them about an inch that way once I turn it inside out they'll overlap each other and close it up I don't need to stitch it close or anything that little envelope Closing is going to be enough to finish the edges and get it the way I want it. So that's all I really need to do to do this. So let's go ahead and slide this in. Now the scary part about this is what direction is this going to sew? If it sews this back, it's pro it could possibly push this out of the way. Um, so I'm going to watch it and see what it's going to do. So we're going to put the needle down and push go. It's gonna do a double straight stitch, which is exactly what I want for a strong stitch. It's going backwards, that's good. I'm gonna watch it as it goes this way. Now, as it comes this way, that should be fairly safe. I'm not gonna worry about that, but it's gonna come around and come this way, and it's gonna go right over this fold. So watch it, I'm gonna push this down, and if I don't let go of it, Come on, don't make a liar out of me. It's going to slow, so very, very, very slow. And it just went over that, and I'm going to let go. I only sewed it one time. That's funny, because I know I set it to do a double stitch. But that's okay. I can do it a second time if I really wanted to do it a second time, or I can just go ahead and take it off of there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Give me a second. Okay, two confessions time. I had to refilm this because I messed up with the microphone. I've still got a lot to learn. Um, but so I've already cut this out. But when you take it out of the hoop, you're going to cut all the way around it, give yourself about a quarter inch around where this seam goes right here. And if you look at it from this side where I folded the fabric over each other, um, same thing, you got a seam right here, you're gonna cut about a quarter of an inch around the whole thing. And then when you get to your corners, you're going to cut about an angle right across here. Cause if you do that, then you won't have so much bulk. And then when you go to turn it, you're gonna put your thumb up inside of here like this. Sometimes I lean on this table and it just shakes all over like crazy. I'm trying to do a close-up and at the same time not shake the camera. So I'll put my thumb up in there. I'm going to fold my fabric back and I'm going to push. And I'm going to do that with all four of my corners. Fold this fabric back. Push it. And let's do this one. I think I'm going to get it. There we go. Then you need something to push out the corners. Don't use your scissors. It's really tempting, but you could push right through it and then you've just messed up your corner. I have this really cool tool. I got this at work. Um, it's a, it's called a four in one tool because this side here has a stylet, um, a stiletto that I can use when I'm doing my quilting. And this side here has a seam ripper and this side here has a really flat edge that I can do like finger pressing with and push down on something while I'm still sitting at the sewing machine. And this side here has a point, but not a pointy point. Does that make sense? Anyway, I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna push it in here 
and because it's wooden and it's not that sharp I can press, press pretty hard to get into these corners here there we go that's good and then I'm going to take it over to the sewing I mean to the ironing board I'm going to spray it with best press and I'm going to press the daylights out of it so I get a nice flat mug rug I think that came out really cute and you can do it in a few minutes you can do it with just about any of your embroidery designs that you have in your um, stash of embroidery designs and make gifts for everybody for Christmas, Easter, Halloween, whatever you want to do. Um, I hope you learned something. I hope you had a good time and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.